Hey, JS, don't lag. Let's see. We're going over two very, very popular players. Everyone is going to know who these players are. I wasn't sure what I was going to do today. However, I saw this game, and I instantly had my answer for me. Because back when I was first learning how to play, back when I was like uh, 10Q, and dreaming that one day, maybe, maybe if I was lucky, I would be 5Q, I began studying and memorizing pro games. And Li Cheng Ho and Ni Sidol were definitely two uh, matchups that I would always go over because their games were just so awesome. I was a double-digit Q for about a month or two. Uh, those of you who do not know, though, Lee Siddle, fairly aggressive, Wee Cheng Ho, a little bit more aggressive nowadays. So we can expect a bit of a violent game. Definitely wouldn't expect to have a passive, maybe influential game uh, going on between these two. That would be very unusual. Lee Siddle's threatening either Kobayashi or, not Kobayashi, uh, Chinese or Orthodox, depending on what white plays. White does not play 4-4, four, four, so the chance of a mini Chinese variation is kind of disappearing. But black can still take orthodox for himself if he wants. But like I mentioned, he's aggressive, so not at all surprising to see that he approaches. And now decisions really start being made. Because approaching or in closing, that's eh, fairly straightforward. Answering an approach, on the other hand, that's a little bit more difficult, because you have to figure out what exactly do you want. I mean, do you want territory? Do you want him running away? What is it you want to do? Question from Motokamaku, Omoku. I always want to put an A in your name. Is black D, uh, black D5 is generally more severe, okay, D5, right, than white P3? Huh. You're saying if if uh, white plays p3 right now, it's more severe? I think they're equal. Um, I think they're about equal unless we remove d5 off the board, then it's clearly more severe. Uh, the fact that black gets to follow up first, though, that's important. Yeah, first one to approach definitely has an issue, that's true. Not really certain in what other situation you, you'd you really find that in, though. I'm trying to think of a, vari uh, of a variation where... I don't know. Odd question. Anyway, white has choices. Could approach. We do see that sometimes. Could approach. Could pincer. I'll get that over that one. And could take territory. All of these are very fine moves. C is a nightmare. C is not really a nightmare. C can be made very, very easy. A lot of simple variations with C. White instead says wants territory. Something that you might not think is a nightmare, but can be, depending on what black does. Black could descend, drop into a large avalanche. That could be a nightmare. I mean, every one of these variations has difficult variations, which you can slip into. I don't really think one is more difficult than the other, really. But that's just my opinion. I've seen C forever, so that's probably one I'm most comfortable with. But Black is not going to go into a large avalanche. He could have. If he was really, really interested in trying to make a Chinese variation here, he could play either something like this or maybe even a micro, get a framework going. 
but he decides not to do that. Wide backs off, takes the territory. Uh, unsurprising nowadays, Black immediately approaches the top stone, threatening a very large development on the left-hand side. White backs off. Now, obvious question that we usually get is, well, what happens if white cuts? Yep, it will be going on to YouTube. And answer to this, as long as you do not play the Atari here, you're fine. Because if you play here, white's going to extend. We wind up having to connect. White's getting rather happy with his uh, shape. His stone's a bit stronger. He might pincer you. He might continue. Well, he probably won't continue over the top. That'd be kind of weird. If we do that, then we're just inviting sixth line or fifth line territory. We probably wouldn't invite that. Actually, there is a bit of a topic here. I picked this game for more than the reason of the two players involved. Though, that helped make me decide. But there is a topic here. And we will see that coming up. So, white backed off. Black gets to make a framework. And this is a curious move. Usually we see that uh, the connection keeps things nice and simple. White's going to continue Giuseppe. Black will do likewise. Situation that we've probably, almost all of us have been in. We know that there's invasion points here. We know that our opponent can also probe and keep us low. Or lower, rather. So, pretty simple. But Black plays a little bit more of an unusual move. This bit of a question mark here. It gives different options to uh, White. Sure, we can simply extend again. Let our opponent do likewise. We can probe here. Also, uh, interesting idea. I've also seen games, believe it or not, where when Black does not approach immediately and tries to simply settle, I've actually seen a few professional games in which White's uh, poked at this shape immediately, just to get into a fight. So, a bunch of different options here for uh, White. White chooses to poke. Probe, sorry. See if he can force his opponent to simply make a little bit of a heavy shape here. Because if what Black doesn't extend, and if Black simply connects, then if any of you have ever seen d Shape Lecture, you will recognize this one as a very bad shape. So Black says, you know what? I've seen d Shape Lecture as well, and I know better than to play that. So he extends. White has to be careful. It looks like we're being invited to cut immediately. But if we do that, we're going to be Atari. So what are we getting from this? Not much. Don't like that, not playing it. So he extends first. Black follows. And again, we have the question. If we do not extend, and if we cut, same thing. We're about to be captured. We do not want to play this way. I mean, this Atari is not doing anything to us when we have to go back and make sure we're not going to die. This would be failure on epic proportions. Uh, questions? Um, what about the variation where white plays Hane at b6 first? Okay. Hane at b6. Oh, white plays this. Um, yeah, okay, could play that. You're saying play here to see what uh, black's going to do. This viewpoint, we usually see black Hane. White comes underneath. Essentially, a fairly straightforward uh, g6 is the one that you always see. Okay. 
Yeah, G6 would be more common, yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially pretty straightforward. We're trading influence for territory. Not certain who I would like this better. No, actually, I think I would like this better for black. Because the right-hand side is still so open. And we've already got a stone at C14, so we know that bl that white's not going to be able to get the whole left side uh, with, like, one more stone. Because he's going to have to try to fight that lingering one. They approach stone at C14. So that's going to really wreck the left-hand side. Whereas the right is completely all open. Probably jump into an orthodox opening on the right-hand side now. Because, I mean, if we were to enclose and we go into a normal kind of a split, and let's say we just play mindless Jiseki here, um, blah, 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 stop lagging, then there's so much that we have to do here. We want to answer the top side and deal with this stone, preferably kicking it, but at the same time, we want to get a move in the bottom because we do not want to see black take a move like H3, and get this enormous framework. This seems like a little bit of a headache for white. It's probably playable, but I'm not sure if I would enjoy playing it. I have to be really be careful with that sequence. So anyway, white extends. Oh wait, I ignored the token white. Why B6 response? Yeah, okay, we already did that. I think. With response to E7. Oh, white B. Yeah, okay, we did. Alright, so at this point, uh, the question of why didn't we Hane here, it's because we get to Hane at the head of two stones, and three stones. So just going by proverb, we know we're all good. If we go here and extend again and get to cut, we're not really facing a liberty shortage. Proverb is kind of going out the window a bit, we've got multiple cut points. Black simply connects. White forced to connect as well. Going to be in Sente because we can't simply as black here. And I know a lot of you are probably wanting to do this. Some of you probably even played it in your games. I'm looking at you double digit cues, but you might immediately see this wall and think, oh no, I need to do something about it right now, otherwise I'm in so much trouble. So you're going to be looking at a move like either the enclosure, or maybe trying to approach at uh, K3. Wrong idea. Let's use the wall that black has first before worrying about what white has. And we can see that black does have a wall here. So we're going to try to use it to the best of his advantage. And he plays really... Uh, can't really say, say anything else besides greedy about this. As uh, our jam just uh, predicted, yes, he jumps out. Does not simply make a low extension here, because if he does, then this can be kept low. I mean, can push there to keep it low, can push there to keep it low, might be able to shoulder hit, can cap. Obviously not very uh, good for black, not looking well at all. If we go high, uh, now it's a bit better. The kick is still a bit annoying. I'm not entirely convinced there's absolutely no Aji down there. If we don't kick. But assuming that is actual territory. It's still not very much, and still can be kept kind of low. Because we've got uh, pokes here to try and force more protective moves. Black doesn't get a whole lot. Uh, B16 idea for B... Do, 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 do. Um, not if white makes this exchange. After F4. Um, no. I don't like that at all. Wait a minute, let me make sure I'm reading this right. B16. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm liking that correctly. Because this is kind of trying to be greedy, but you're making the incorrect assumption that your opponent has to play the 3-3 so that you get to keep developing here. 
where he has to do no such thing. He could shoulder hit. He could just flat out pincer you. Probably not going to attack. Well, even the well, even the attachment. You know, we can live here pretty ridiculously, can't we? Not a whole lot of difficulty there. So no, I don't like b16. b16 seems like a bad idea. Is e14 a valid cap for white? Um, where? Here? Um, it's a bit of a softer move. I'd probably go with one of the invasions and point out, look, you made a mistake. You should have protected this area. You didn't, so I'm going to go in there instead. I like that a little bit idea. I might like this a bit more if we had already made some kind of exchange here. In which case we're just developing. So Black says I'm going to try to get as much of as possible. You invade me, I'm going to cap you. So prepare for that. Li Cheng Ho calmly defends his corner because he's also threatening other moves. There's Aji at A now because there's a link up, there's the escape, and there's still a two-space extension. So the idea that this area is going to fall completely to black cannot do that one yet. Very unlikely. Also, in case some of you uh, don't realize, it also fends off this, which is really irritating. If we don't defend that 3-3, three, three, then we can easily live in the corner and still get nice influence while completely destroying uh, white shape. Not fun. Those of you who study pro games will probably be more familiar with this sequence, and that is the reason why. Uh, remind me USF, and yeah, sure. Alright, so white takes his corner. Black takes his large, large move, because one thing that white would like to do now that he's nice and stable is extend from this. And a great way to do that is by uh, an approach. So large move for both players. But here is where interesting things start to occur. Because we've got a very important decision to make here as white. We can do one of three things. We can say that we are invested in our influence. So I'm going to still try and take some kind of a point here on the bottom. That way I'm making something with my stones. Okay. Not a bad idea. I can see how uh, getting that one. We could say, oops. Orthodox, I don't want him getting an, an extension from that enclosure, so I'm going to split this either by playing, uh, you know, one or three, or two or three, sorry. That's another good idea. But at the same time, we've got, and let's go ahead and mark this, I guess. We've got this, oops, no, that is not what I meant to do. Who hiss? Meant to do label tool. Oh well. Uh, at the same time, we have this very odd space over on the left, which we know we can invade and do something with. So we've got uh, territory in goat on the bottom. We can split to make sure that black can't get very large on the right. Or we can try and do something on the left. Maybe attack C14 stones. If we get strong there, actually, we're attacking both groups. Now, knowing a little bit about Lee Siddle, can probably figure out which idea he's going to go with. Is he going... Er, sorry. I said that wrong. Knowing a bit about Li Chang Ho, sorry, because it's his move, and how he has developed a bit of more of aggressive style, we can kind of predict which one he's going to go with. 
Probably not going to simply take territory and leave his opponent to do whatever he wants. The right is very predictable. Instead, he attacks. Says that this is entire... I record these and I upload them to YouTube, yes. Instead, he attacks. Says that these stones have no connection to each other whatsoever. And I'm going to point that out. Black's forced to connect. As you'd imagine. Mm-hmm. And then white gets a base. Well, not a little bit, not really a base. That's horrifyingly undercut. Maybe the beginnings of a base. It's able to split both groups apart. White says, you are not strong there. So I'm going to cap you. The reason why I'm going to cap you is because I don't have to try and do anything crazy and connect, because that's just low and submissive and not going to work. I don't have to run away just yet, and wouldn't you know it, you're behind enemy lines. Bloop, 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 bloop. So I'm going to try and seal you in, depending on how you respond. And see where we go from there. White says, but I would really, really, really like to not be sealed in. So he attaches, make himself stronger. Because keep in mind, if he can make himself stronger while one side is uh, gaining strength and the other isn't, then that splitting attack is going fairly well for him. At least at all, no stranger to fights though. Going to try and pick apart White's shape while he's strengthening himself. Very nice. Threatening the uh, little cut here. Forces white to defend. Again, forces white to defend because we don't want to be split. So now we've ensured that white has no shape. He's got a bamboo joint. Which isn't really effective for making two eyes. Meanwhile, we've got possible connection underneath. We definitely have a base for the D14 stones. So he's slowly getting himself out of trouble here. But this is interesting. White turns to escape. I would probably either connect extend, respond locally without even thinking about it. But since black can actually connect up right now, he says, well, I have Sente. So I'm going to see if I can cut you off. Because if I can cut you off, that's huge. Then you won't just have this middle group to worry about, but you'll have this bottom one to worry about as well. So you have to respond to me here. So White says, okay, fine, I'll respond to you here. Good question. Let's find out. Who will win? Between Li Sidol and Li Cheng Ho, you never know. Both very strong players. So, Black gets the, the response he was looking for. Yes, Lee wins. There you go. So, Black gets the response he's looking for. Strengthens himself. White responds because he wants to keep his corner. And then plays elsewhere. Which is, again, very not what I would do. I would probably be playing at least one more move here 
just because I'm nervous. I don't like having weak groups on the board. And if I was playing these at all, I would like having weak groups on the board even less than that. But White's like, nope, you're not surrounding me yet. Those two stones are extremely weak. Nothing to worry about. I'm going to go and do something else. So he splits. Black backs off. White takes an extension, which Black will immediately pressure on. No reason not to. It's pretty much a free move. You know your opponent's going to respond, because that three-space extension, it's not immortal. It has a little, little tiny weakness right at the heart. So we're going to respond to this, most definitely. Tries to go in the corner, which Black will not respond to. He's going to pincer. Because if we respond to this, Black, White gets perfect shape. This is nice and strong. You cannot really do anything against this. You might have some end game against this particular shape of White's here, but you're not throwing in. You're not going to force it to run away. It's nice and resilient. So you don't want your opponent to get this, especially in your area. Because after he gets nice and strong here, what's he going to do? He's going to attack you over and over again. So not going to do that. Going to pincer. White, not really interested in trying to connect underneath. Jumps out. Going back into Jiseki here. But I'm sure everyone knows. Black saves a stone. Because again, same thing. If we take the corner, we've given up our stone. Now white has a nice base. He actually killed our stone while he was getting a base. He's going to probably be eyeing our six. Strong in the center. Lots of horrible things going on here. We don't want him to get it. It's just not good. So we save our stone. White takes 3-3, three, three, but black still has plenty of room to extend, so he's doing fine. So now the question is what to do. Well, once again, we're at that point where we have to decide what is going on on this board. Are there any weak groups? Are there any large points? Have to definitely ask ourselves that immediately. As for weak groups, our eye will immediately fall to this, this, and this. Because two is just hanging out in the middle... Just saying, I bet you'd like to attack me, but you're not surrounding me yet, so you can't. Ha ha. Not surrounded, your stones are too weak. No way you're attacking me yet. One, on the other hand, all but surrounded. Three, we'd kind of like to attack three. Can't really envision killing it, though. And if we pincer it and we cannot kill that stone, it means we're going to get separated, which means we're giving ourselves a weak group. So, kind of hard to read that one out. Instead, Li Cheng Ho goes for a very common sequence, simply bringing out R10 immediately. As U Takemoku has, has mentioned. Standard sequence, black jumps out, white's going to poke at, or I always say poke, white's going to probe at it, black will fix his shape, white will attach for shape so he can jump on out with no risk of being cut or anything horrible. However, 
now things are starting to get a little bit more interesting for white. And I think someone just pointed this out in the chat. Um, yeah. I think uh, Rhythm is kind of uh, onto that fact as well. I mean, this group, it's got some shape, but it's not completely alive yet. And this group is not surrounded, so it's not completely alive yet. And we're both kind of in the center. So this is turning out to be a little bit interesting for white. Or for black, sorry. Because he's got, uh, he's an aggressive player. And there are groups in the middle. They could potentially fight. However. Big however. Normal move at the moment is to defend for black. Make sure white can't come out. Black instead extends, putting pressure on the corner. Something white really doesn't want to respond to, because if he has to defend himself from the corner, then black's going to go back and go into the middle again, defend himself there, make himself stronger, our weak groups will become apparent. So white says, I don't have time to do any of that. So forget you, I'm not responding to this. I'm going to isolate you. You've got weaker up in the middle, I've got weaker up in the middle now. If you want to work my corner, have at it, but I'm attacking this. He's not about to give Sente to his opponent to keep getting him stronger. And this is a, this is a really big mistake that a lot of cues, especially, will do. They probably would have defended this. Nine times out of ten, they'd probably play some defensive move here. Either something like this, maybe something in the corner. Because they'll see H17, their eye immediately falls to the corner in that obvious point at C17. And that's as far as their thought process goes. It's like, oh, I'm weak there, I'm going to defend immediately. They're just going to follow their opponent around the board constantly. Uh, I'm certain you know if you are guilty of doing it, especially if you ever played a stronger player. I mean, much stronger player, a couple of ranks higher. Kind of get intimidated, kind of just start answering every stupid move that's played. Even though, in the back of your mind, you're probably certain that you probably shouldn't have done some of them. But white is a pro, he's not going to do it. It's like, nope, this is more important. I can't let you just strengthen yourself everywhere on the board. I, I'll lose at that point. I just can't keep answering you. So black jumps out very, very fast. So this is an interesting, an interesting position because black's getting a chance at what he wants to do and white's getting a chance at what he wants to do because they both want to fight in the middle and they both want to fight in the middle because they're both viewing each other as being weak. It's like, well, I'm not the strongest, but neither is he. So maybe I can profit from this. And they both have that same idea. So this is a cute little fight they have going on here. But in fights, we immediately start evaluating. Where can... How is my opponent going to live? He has to do one of two things, right? He's got to connect up, or... He has to make two eyes in the middle. Or, well, wherever he's wherever he is. He's got to make eyes there. Well, we can see that we've got a lot of different ways to poke at this shape. So where is he going to connect up? He can connect up to the bottom left, not the bottom right. Or maybe the top. So white says, you know what? You're all third line there. I can get free moves against you. So I'm going to attach. Almost any time you make this double two-point extension, you should expect attachment to the middle stone. Because it's just a free move. There's not much else your opponent can do there. And you're going to have to respond, because you're not going to allow the Hane. If you allow the Hane, you're going to get cut apart, and that's going to hurt. All you have to do, all you can really do is choose, you know, which way you want to extend, left or right. You don't want a Hane, because that invites cross-cuts, complication, it's what your opponent wants. So black extends back to his uh, cornerstones. White says, thanks, that's all I wanted. Maybe later on I'll follow it up with an extension, get you to respond to me again. 
but uh, that's what I was looking for. Make sure that black can never connect these stones, because that would be large in the attack. Getting to connect this immediately throws a fight back onto white. So black says, fine, I'm going to connect up. Why strengthen himself? Get some happy little shape here. And for now, everything's peaceful again. No one is completely alive in the middle yet. There's still a lot of Aji. Just because there's a Hane there, there's still a cut point, there's still a Hane. A lot of different things there. Black defends. Sente for white, so he goes and cuts. Black says, fine. I'm going to... allow you to uh, do that. I don't care. You can Atari your way to freedom, but you'll make me stronger. So have fun. Bit of an annoying move, just wrecking black shape. And defending itself in the process. Because if we played elsewhere, then... This is something that gets annoying later. Because we get to, you know, sacrifice and connect. Which is large. Very large. So, one free poke, and that goes away. Now, we had to do it in Sente, because otherwise his two stones in center would get killed. And he doesn't want that to happen. Black is up one. Oops, shoot, I did it again. Wrong one. Black is up one stone. And then connects. This is interesting. There's almost no Aji remaining anymore. But Black plays here. I'm curious, wasn't there a chance for white to kill the black group? Um, which black group? Wasn't there a chance for white to kill O12? That's odd. I don't see how. O12 is fine here. Oh, so you want to do this. I see what you're interested in now. I see where you're going with this. Have you read out the Hane? Because if you assumed that Black was going to do this, then bad read. They're definitely going to Hane, which puts liberty shortages to white many liberty shortages to white. Has to connect here, yeah? So black gets the cut. At this point we're still at two liberties. All we can really do here is run away. I 
actually, not even that. We could just, um... Actually, all we to do is just play 09, right? Whoa, what coming? Sorry, missing them. Um, B11, yeah, and 10. I assume they read this out. Yeah, good assumption. Uh, M9, L10, Q8 looks dead that way. Sorry, what was going on? L10, right, Q8 looks dead this way. Yeah, I would, I would assume that that's not going to be a happy group anymore. B N eight here. Um, I think no. I guess you're looking at this now. Sorry, um, P908. Oh, is that what I just went over that you were going to mention? I guess so. I'm wondering if there's a better way of handling this, though, actually. This is kind of the same thing almost, huh? Though this is actually bad because that ladder's not favorable at all, so we can't even do that. We have to just extend. So we don't even have to worry about being cut, do we? Ladder goes to uh, H3, doesn't it? I kind of read that fast, but. Yeah. So this is kind of game over at this point. I mean, we still have the ladder, so we can't even think of cutting and trying to do something tricky there. I mean, black's just out and our stones are dead. So yeah, that'd be done. Um, no. Black doesn't fear this. White didn't play this way because it was a bad variation for him. That's why he went here and then here. He's not going uh, on L11, uh, or N11, sorry. He's not going to push through that way. And so we have this variation back in the actual game. Nope, sorry, this variation. My bad, that was a bad one. Right, the Atari, take, got it. And then black connects. Uh, that group is a bit weak, yes. That group is definitely a bit weak. But the one, the corner's fine, upper left. The uh, left group at F11, that's fine now as well. Only have that one group left, and white knows it, so he protect, uh, moves to protect it. Threatens, responds, same thing. A lot of forcing moves, just forcing uh, white to live very, very tiny. Oops, shoot. There we go. Bit of life and death here. Oops, shoot, again. Keep getting ahead of myself. Ah! Now I'm forgetting whose move it is. Yeah, this is not just 
a tree with one or two uh, branches broken. I think I've just cut the entire thing down and lit it on fire. Uh, whose move it is? Um, Black's turn? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so Black is playing here instead. White was forced to live. Uh, most of it. I usually, when I'm picking a game, uh, all of it, typically not. Most of it, 100, 150, 200 moves or so. Uh, typically, yeah. But I keep going back and forth to the variations, so despite knowing the game, it just all gets muddled in my head after a while. The more variations I go over. It's like, what? Whose turn is it? What's going on? Alright, so Black Hanes. And now we have a problem here, because we can see clearly that this shape is not a very good one. White defends, or black defends himself, sorry. That, I'm kind of, I, I don't know. I think that might have been Time Suji, to be honest, because I don't really see any other point to what he just did. So he's probably low on time and had to uh, just quickly force his opponent to respond. White lit, yes we do. White immediately lives. And then black comes up with a very, very painful move. Who can actually see it? But white had to go back and answer that move. Is so large. Okay, we're kind of all over the place with our guesses. C-17's not too large right now, no. A lot of people are saying the bottom, develop that. This move is really painful. I mean, this group only's got three liberties, now it's down to two. So how is this thing going to possibly survive? K-14, yeah, white tries K-14. So black extends. At this point, there's nothing you can do. You're dead. White Atari and sacrifices. Nothing else he can do here. Just force um, the capture here. So at least this way we're getting a little bit for our investment. Why not K15 instead? Okay, good question. Um, when and where? Or when and by who? Okay, instead of white's K... Okay, good. Instead of white's cave, okay, instead of, yep, yeah, that one, gotcha. Now what? We're going to take, and then we're going to Tari, and then we're going to Tari, and we're all dead. So, still doesn't quite work out there. Yes, best shape ever. No problem. You're not the only one who uh, was wondering, though you might have been the only one who asked. I'm sure other people would be wondering as well. So it's always good to ask. The quiet people get their question answered. So those stones are gone. That hurts immensely. 
white profits a bit though. I mean, the corner's a little bit larger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stones. Okay, that's that. That's a bit bad. But it's contained, and we profited. So maybe the game's not over yet. Unfortunately, it would have been a little bit better if this was Sente. Unfortunately, it's not. So that's unfortunate. Black gets to keep expanding uh, territorially ahead. That's that, that, that's a bit that's a bit bad. White pokes and decides. You know what? I can't let you have all that. I'm going to lose the game if I just passively save all if I passively strengthen all my groups. I've got something here. So he goes aggressive. Tries to break connection. Allowing White another move, which is very large for an invasion, getting a free move in there. But Black's just pointing out, you know, you're not alive in the middle yet, so I don't know what you think you're doing. White obviously has to defend. Black finally responds to the invasion. Gets to extend. And here you can see what he's doing. He's just asking them, you know, which group don't you like? Because I'm just going to keep going back and forth, poking whatever one you don't defend. And something's going to give. So really, it's very interesting when these games come down to two. Uh, this one. We, this one and this one. Uh, when these games come down to essentially realizing how, to, how deadly it is to have multiple weak groups on the board, it just really uh, sticks at home for you. Because I have taught so many people, so many people, who immediately, at this point, they'd be like, well, I need to protect my territory, I'm going to Hane and defend. You know, forget everything else, I want to keep my territory. I can see that I'm getting territory, I can count this territory, so this is safe for me. They would never dream of trying to separate this. Because now there's that question in the back of your head, well, what if they both live? Where's my territory coming from then? Is H3 going to get cut off? Is that going to die? I mean, it's so risky. But that basic idea that you will profit, you will find a way to profit if there are multiple weak groups on the board is there to assure you that this is not the end of the world. You are in the better position. You don't have to just passively, you know, jump into this and just try and frantically protect yourself. So, white tries to come out. Black says, okay, I'll just defend myself because you didn't protect yourself in the middle. I'm just going to make sure there's no Aji there and you're dead. White tries that whole kill off H3 idea. This looks very, very odd. But as long as M4, that group there, is not alive locally, the odds of killing off that group are kind of slim. This, again, is time Suji. This is also time Suji. Essentially, uh, Li Chengho is low on time, so he's playing forcing moves that he knows his opponent's not about to ignore just so he can get another Byoyomi. Well, the trouble is, White has to live with both of his groups so far. I mean, we can take time out to try and live with a move like S11, but trouble with that is... Our other group's going to be under attack again, or separate. I'm not even sure if S11 actually does S11 actually work. If we do that, and we respond, and we get the I, we can ignore that and get rid of the middle one? 
We can do that, right? If we go derp, 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 derp. I'll have to look at that later. So, White tries to completely surround. Take his profit on the bottom. And now this is the moment of truth. Can Black actually live in there? What do you think? Because if... Uh, Otakumoku... Uh, Duh. If Otakamoku is actually correct in that white can still live on the right and black dies on the bottom, then clearly this was good for uh, white. And everything I previously said is completely wrong, which would be kind of embarrassing. It's like, what? Multiple weak groups? Dude, those are so fine, man. Don't worry about them. Just, just keep making them. Keep making them. You'll find something to do. Don't worry. I've done that once, actually, USF, and nobody caught it. I have done that once. To this day, no one caught that. Which is kind of funny. So, it goes for a forcing move. I'm gonna tell you. Extends again. Black blocks. Now we have interesting things going on. Because we've got a potential cut point. Pushes through. White aggressively blocks, allowing the cut. Now things are getting dangerous. Oops, shoot. Bye bye tree, and then hacked off another branch. Oh well. White connects, black gets to extend. These stones die. So we're still not quite having shape yet. But this move is so large, all he was looking for were some forcing moves. So he can try to make white defend that cut point. Because if he has to defend that cut point, he's he's uh, done it. But White says no, not going to defend it. I'm going to cut right through you. But this is Sente, and that this is Sente is enormous. Descends, descends again, forcing Black, forcing White to connect up. And that white has to connect up is, again, really, really large. Because he's protecting against this. This is not going to be a threat to cut. And that that's not a threat to cut means this is game over. He can't force a capture race. He's going to have to... He's going to have to... Uh, if white saves his stones in the center, then he has to capture from the outside, which he can't do. He doesn't have the liberties. The only way to try to actually capture this black group is if he could play here and reduce black's liberties, but he can't. He has to do it from completely from the other side, which is horrible. Because we need to now connect this to prevent Seki, and at the same time, we have to get our three stones out of there because they, don't, they no longer have enough liberties to live. So we need both moves at once here. The fact that he can't now has Seki. Since that is Seki, white has nothing, I mean, even trying to live in the middle is still really, really difficult. I mean, what is this? I guess you're aiming for that? But 
but that's not quite going to work. Well, I guess it will. See if we just play here, then what? It's not enough to live. Well, it might be. No, that's definitely not enough to live. That's dead. I don't see another way for this white group in the center or right hand side to live, so I think it's just toast regardless of S11. So yeah, that's dead, and the bottom's alive. So that's the end of that. And I guess some of you are having trouble seeing Saki? Is that what's going on? Uh, I'm not really paying attention to the comments. Yeah, Bill's out, uh, what's Saki? Essentially it's this. We can't capture, right? Well, this is retarded, actually. Neither one can capture the uh, inside. Okay, this timing actually can. Hmm. Is this not Seki? Oh, right. It's Seki if you... Yeah, you gotta... Right, 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 right. You have to... No, that's dead. What the frack? If you jump out, is there any way to make that Seki? Hmm... I guess you're just dead, actually, now that I read that out. Or clicked it out. Yeah, because you're toast. Hmm. Yes, element C. Um, this was from, I don't know. I kind of memorized this off Tygen. I can go to go for go and look. And get back to you on that. Maybe that is Seki after all. Because we can't do that. Then that's completely toast. Eh. No, that is not Seki. So yeah, I guess white's just toast. That's bad too. Either way, you're in trouble because you can't let the, white can't let these stones live, and yet he has no choice. So yeah, white's just dead one way or the other, and then the right side's not alive either, and then the top got captured earlier. Uh, when to try H4 Basilican? After the cut? Instead of J9. Well, oh, to capture. I see what you're saying. That would turn into that. One, two, three liberties, two. I think you're dead. So yeah, not enough.
So yeah, White resigned the minute Black connected, because there's just too much. He needs to connect, and then his stones are killed. Or he drops them out, and then his middle ones look like are going to die, or turn into Seki, though I don't see a Seki, so I think they're just toast as well. So yeah, bad for him.